We're at the kids table. Yes. <laughs> I think we can. Oh, well, Ceylon is yeah. left again, though. I think he has some connectivity issues. Just now, we couldn't hear him. So um, maybe Adam, you can go ahead then. Yeah. Get us going. Yeah. Adam, Adam why don't you start since we don't, we don't know you yet? <laughs> Good deflection. <sighs> Okay, so I'm uh, I'm Adam Muma. I'm 25. I'm a visual artist from uh, KL. I'm based in KL. I mostly create uh, a psychedelic uh, abstract art. That's about it. <laughs> what got you into art, maybe? Like, is it um, full time for you? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a full time job for better or worse. When you uh, say psychedelic, is it related to? Psychedelic experiences you've had? Is it related to. Oh. Are we here? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. It's crazy. Weren't we supposed to start at 11 o'clock to standard time? Is this earlier? What's happening here? No, is this what we're scheduled? Oh, very light right now. <laughs> is this what we're scheduled? Yes, yeah. I think so. That's crazy because I got another email that um, uh, Frank had told me it was later. Mm. Maybe there, there, thing. Let me just see here. The arts, the yeah, arts contemporary. What what's time is it supposed to be? Is it a, a, a nine thirty? So we're on. I think we're, we're on. on. Yes, we're, we're, we're on. on. We're on. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So basically, um, are we live? Are we live? Yes. We yes, are live. Are. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So why don't you all introduce yourself? I'm Ethan Cohen. I'm your moderator. Um, this is an exciting event for Horasis uh, Arts, the Contemporary Asian Art Reimagined. And um, I'm actually in New York City. Um, it is just a little bit after 9.30. Um, it's uh, Thanksgiving Day uh, from America. So I wish you all oh, hey, welcome, welcome. And um, today we're going to have a very, very dynamic uh, discussion with some very distinguished artists from all over the world. And... Um, we're going to tackle numerous questions. Um, one of them is like, what is Asian contemporary art? And how do Asian artists and art institutions define post-COVID era, the post-COVID era? And I think that, um, or what is Asian art? And I think that um, each of you have a very different history, a different artistic development, a different artistic practice. So why don't we begin by um, maybe Adam DeBauer? Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, where you're from, um, a little, just maybe a short, maybe 30 second, who you are, what you do, and um, um, that would be great. Got it. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam DeBauer, and I am a visual artist based currently in Los Angeles. I have Dutch and Indonesian ancestry, and for the past 10 years I've been living and working between the United States, the UK, and uh, Java, Indonesia, making work about all of those places and all of them. Great. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Um, let's go to Hannah Shin. Yes. So, hello everybody. I am um, the foreign artist, Hannah Shin, and I work between Seoul, Jakarta, and London. Um, I am an abstract painter, right? And I combine confident use of lines, you know, colors and balance to convey the sense of like vibrancy and energy within my life. And I work with oil paint as my main medium to create my gestural mark makings. And these mark makings are very important in my art practice because they are like the captured moments of, you know, events from the everyday life, you know, it's a decision making process. And, you know, these layered marks could perhaps mimic certain, you know, natural forms, but they're, you know, quickly dispersed into abstraction. So, yeah, I am doing very personal abstract painting. Terrific. Thank you so much. When you were speaking, I think it's important, it was a little bit hard to hear your microphone. So speak a little bit slowly and very clearly into your screen so we can hear you and understand you. Um, Adam, Umar, why don't you yeah. give us a quick introduction to to you and um, keep it short and then we'll come back to you um, uh, and I'll be asking questions of all of you. Go ahead. Oh, so, hi guys, so my name is Adam Umar, I'm 25, I'm a visual artist, I'm based in Kuala Lumpur, in the city in the heart of KL. 
um, I create uh, psychedelic abstract art, uh, various media, uh, abstract paintings, uh, digital art, mural, and yeah, that's about it. Good. So you're from, you're a Malaysian artist. Yes, from Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Terrific. Okay. And Minnie, how about you? Okay. Hi. Um, I'm a Malaysian artist as well, but I'm based in Penang. And I work primarily with drawing and painting on paper cutouts and collage. So what I do is I layer all the cutouts to make a sort of imagine that within a shadow box. And my work deals primarily a lot with myths and storytelling. And, um, and I work with my technique because it gives me the flexibility to sort of manipulate the image however I want it and to reflect sort of like the local elements of where I'm based in as well. So. That's my intro. Cool, cool. And um, how about um, Silan Palais? Where are you from? And um, tell us a little bit about your art practice. Oh, I can't hear you. You're on mute. Can't oh, I hear think you. there's a mic issue. Yeah, actually, maybe uh, Laura, can you unplug it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Can we open? Let's see, um, Silan, for some reason, we can't manage the mic. Let's see, this is Silan, let's see here. Uh, translate, cast, no, inspect. No, I, I, I think it's a problem with his microphone, it's not on our end. Yeah, yeah. speaker, let's see. I hit, look up, uh, no, 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 no. no. I'm, luckily I have a very, very competent uh, associate director of my gallery, um, Lara Kami, who's right next to me. Say hi, Lara. Hi. Hello, uh, Lara. Lara comes from Turkey and has worked with me for the last three, four years. Yeah, this is fun. And uh, well, I'm not sure why, Silan, we can't hear you. Yeah, it's not on our end. Um, do you want to? Let's see here. Let's see. We, I, I see that Winston Mock has uh, joined us, which is very nice. How are you there, Winston? Uh, Sina's asking if he should reconnect. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe restart the computer should... and try. Do you want to try to reconnect? Hmm. Yeah, maybe he's going to come back and try to reconnect with us. So basically, while we're waiting for, um, uh, well, actually, I'll give, you, I'll give you an introduction. Silan Palais, he is an artist from, a very engaged artist from Singapore. Um, and I think that um, he is involved you know, socially, politically. Um, he's a global citizen. Um, he has a Sri Lankan background. Um, uh, he's never visited Sri Lanka, uh, but he's based in Singapore. Interesting. Um, I think all of you, uh, we had the luxury of having, oh, here we go. The baby's coming on. Can we hear you now? No. Don't hear you. Yeah. You can hear us, though. You can hear us, right? You can hear us, though. Um, Yeah. hmm. We hear you. Um, What we could do is um, try to be, this is sort of performative uh, art here. (laughs) I'm just thinking now how we can involve you if we can't hear you. So in fact, we we could, you can hear us. You could actually write notes into the chat. Maybe you could also, uh, I I can read into the chat on your behalf. Um, I, I was basically saying that you are from Singapore. You are 33 years old. Um, you are involved socially, politically. You're um, you're a global citizen. Um, you're originally uh, your family is Sri Lankan. However, you've never visited Sri Lanka. Um, you said that um, your father is a taxi driver. Uh, your mother is a factory worker. Um, so you are really from the working class. But you are also an art collector. You are almost, it's so interesting that you are 
um, through your in intelligence and perseverance and um, uh, the greatness of society today, you are your own human being and uh, uh, you're trying to give back to society and also reflect on society. Um, so essentially, I'm a, you said, quote, I'm a citizen of Singapore and a citizen of the world. Um, and it's interesting, you don't know much about Sri Lanka, um, but um, and you have no relatives there. So you're really a, a Singaporean uh, 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 citizen. So that's interesting. Um, so maybe, maybe let's go into it. Just, I'll, let me ask all of you um, some of the things that uh, this... Um, uh, Frank Jurgen Richter asked me uh, to uh, sort, of, sort of steer this panel on arts, contemporary Asian art reimagined. New forms of artistic expression develop constantly, some today as a cultural response to the pandemic, and others in reaction to environmental conditions in Asian and the world. Asian artists throughout history have been avant garde communicators of the continent's most pressing issues. What is Asian contemporary art, and how do Asian artists and art institutions define the post-COVID era? And I think that we all had a very interesting uh, discussion about this. Uh, what is Asian art? Who is an Asian artist? Um, mm. Does it matter today? Um, um, what matters? So, you know, I think that Adam DeBoer, you were even questioning why you were invited to be on this panel about Asian artists, and then you being part Asian, um, uh, part Dutch, living in Los Angeles, but you are also part of this community. And, you know, when I began my career uh, in 1980, um, being an Asian artist was challenging. Um, you, you know, you could not get into a major gallery in New York City. Uh, or in London or Paris, it's very difficult. Very few Asian artists were able to penetrate. Um, I think in my career, I have seen now uh, women, I have seen Asian artists penetrate. And now if you're a major gallery in almost any major city, if you don't have an Asian artist or a woman artist, um, you are behind the times. And mm. maybe we should talk about what is Asian art today? You know, even the idea of, you know, Asian artists have been on the avant-garde, communicators, you know, um, how do we approach this topic, this subject, this question? Uh, put it on the floor. Um, anyone wants to um, speak up, put, maybe put a hand up and I'll um, give you two minutes uh, to discuss. Um, so I guess okay. I'll start. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. So, so Adam, Adam Umar, you're Malaysian, and you're right now in Malaysia at this very moment. Yes, I'm, okay. I'm based in Kuala Lumpur, but I'm currently on the east coast of Malaysia in Kuantan, a very sleepy town at the east coast of Malaysia. I'm, I'm technically on break. But um, to answer your question, you know, when we talk about Asian art, you know, it's always in reference of... Uh, indicated to me to Western art. And I, and I think the elephant in the room that we have to address is obviously Orientalism. Because when we think of Asian art, you know, uh, you know it's, we think of it as something that is you know, the other, something that is exotic, something that uh, does not fit the, the Western narrative of you know, what, what art is, what classical art or what abstract art is. It doesn't fit into the Western uh, art tradition. So I think that's something that we should talk about because there is always this idea that, you know, Asian art is, you know, like Asian culture, you know, it's mystical, it's exotic, or in other words, avant-garde, you know, and even though, you know, the avant-garde, you know, comes from the West, you know, not necessarily the East, but in a sense, it is avant-garde when, you know, relative to, you know, the Western art tradition. Well, that's, that's very interesting. I think that that may come from a limited um, sophistication mm. from the Western curator or museums or collectors. Um, I think that same paradigm, uh, I think Spain used on South America, the exotic, the other, okay. you know, the Mexican, the South American. Um, and I, I think that 
we in the West, as we become more sophisticated or education, um, the, the barriers become less. Um, I think that, so that's sort of interesting. Like, you know, the, I think when you said avant-garde comes from the West, that's so interesting. Um, mm. You know, in my personal experience, for example, when Chinese pop was being developed, a lot of people, oh, derivative, it's just copying Andy Warhol. Mm. And it's just that. And, you know, but in fact, it was very different. Chinese pop was completely different than Western pop, and it has its own uh, valid um, history and etc. Mm. I think that we're breaking down the walls. Mm. I think that I remember there was an exhibition of Japanese impressionist art about 30 years ago, and the director of the Boston Museum of Fine Arts looking at it and he said oh it's derivative Mary Cassatt oh Manet or Monet and, but mm. in fact if we gave a thorough exhibition of each of those artists being shown we might find that some of these Japanese painters in, during the same times as Manet might be as good as Manet or Mary Cassatt but we have never been able in the West to give them the time of day the same examination on an equal playing field. So I think this is what we're, this is what I'd like to address. Um, you, here you have Adam De Boer, Bauer, um, in, in you know Adam, you're a, a Eurasian artist in Los. Well, you're just an artist, but you have different. You, you, tell tell a little bit about you. Yeah, but I but I think you're. I'm completely fine with the descriptors as a Eurasian artist or a mixed mm. artist because it's a four. It's it's forefront in my. Practice. I talk about it all the time. The materials that I employ direct, directly reference things that are happening here, and also craft traditions from Java. So I'm never offended by by that. Mm. But a little, I, I wanted to add to what Adam was saying previously, talking about um, like Orientalism and, and how that is still affecting the way maybe a Western days. I have always been struck. Like we were talking about Jokcha mm. a little bit earlier. Um, mm. That's where I live and work mm. when I go to Indonesia. I go to Jogjakarta. Mm. There is a lot of art being made in Jogjakarta by a lot of young artists. Mm. And really informed, and the way that they speak about their work is oftentimes in relationship to Western paradigms. Mm. So, and uh, there's a lot of pop art being made there, and just like kind of random assortments of brands and things like that. And the way that's been described to me is just that it has to do with social media, how like. Things aren't contextualized anymore from Instagram. There's no hierarchy. So they like it, they take it. And a lot of times there's there's so much conversation about the market, which has been surprising to me because that's considered, even though that is what happens here as well, um, it's not talked about as blatantly. So there's like an artist called Ha Han, who's super famous and lives in Jokja, shows with Gaja. All of his work has just the different currency symbols all over it. And he mm -hmm. just wants to be a blue chip artist. What is? I mean, that that must be a strange phrase for someone living and working in Jokja. Mm -hmm. So I wonder when we talk about exoticizing it, always when we talk about it like west to east, it's definitely happening the other way around mm -hmm. as well. Okay, that's fascinating. We'll say more about that. It's sort of it's, it's, let's elaborate a little bit. There's a lot of people who are joining us. They may not know yeah. about Asian art. They may not know, maybe, you know, because, you know, as the Asian economies have grown, uh, people are paying more attention to Asian art. I think that, you know, uh, some people I remember in 2005, they think, oh, my God, Chinese art. It's amazing. It just it just it just it happened. Well, in fact, it didn't just happen. You know, Asian avant garde art started in you know, really 1979, you know, post Mao. Um, mm. And I think that was, you know, with the success of Chinese contemporary art, I think that it has had ripple effect on art mm. in Indonesia, art in Singapore, art in Hong Kong. I think that, you know, I think what, you know, it, what helped make up Hong Kong, frankly, you know, in the very beginning, 20 years ago, um, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, actually a partner of mine, I have actually made prints with Pace Prints. Uh, they and I have co-published a lot of uh, eight, uh, Chinese contemporary art prints together. Um, and um, when they first went to Hong Kong 20-some years ago, there was no market in Hong Kong. Um, but 20 years ago, there were some Hong Kong people buying Chinese contemporary art. And those people who bought Chinese contemporary art so early, all of a sudden, when Yuan Minjun started to make it, 
um, you know, Fan Li Jun, Zhang Shaogang, uh, Xu Bing, you know, Sai Guachang, boom, they realized, oh my God, art is this, you know, is exciting. Oh, we can make money from art. Oh, art is fun to collect. And, you know, all these aspects. And now, 20 years later, we have a very, very developed art market in Hong Kong. Um, you know, Sotheby's and Christie's and Bonham's, and et cetera. Um, and it has become a world hub. Um, and so things have changed. Now, um, uh, obviously, with the government right now, it's, it's more tenuous. We don't know the future of Hong Kong. Um, but I think Singapore, maybe Malaysia, um, Indonesia, um, uh, where that, you know, cultural hub is going to be. What is maybe the Philippines? You know, um, uh, I don't know. It's really out there. So I think it's going to evolve, and you are players. So I want to hear from all of you. So why don't you... Um, Aaron, you want to speak? Oh, me? Yeah, sure. About the paradigm here. I think um, I will continue on what Ed Omar started about, you know, Orientalism and because I wanted to talk about identity. Mm, and okay. it got me thinking about being an Asian artist, right? Is it enough to be born in Asia, be ethnically Asian, and to create art in Asia, in the Asian context? Because I think a lot of us um, being on this panel now, we were first exposed to art in terms of Western fine art. And we went through the whole system where we learned about Western fine art. Like I learned about Renaissance art. I know more about Italian Renaissance art than about Malaysian art because I studied it. And, and so for most of my life, I just went about it that way. You know, it's like, okay, that is art. And um, I didn't feel compelled to include my sort of background identity into it until I moved back to Malaysia five years ago and decided I wanted to do art full time. And I just felt that it was important to sort of ground my identity because my art is always based on a sort of an alternate reality mm. and it doesn't really reflect, you know, what life is. And so, and I just felt that there's a lot of richness here. And so it was a way for me to reconnect that with my own Malaysian identity, which I sort of didn't have by growing up in a different country in Brunei. And another thing about identity is that um, the importance of Asian artists finding their own voice to represent what we feel is our own identity, because otherwise we have a lot of rich cultural history and background, but it's also easily exploited. Mm. And in terms of cultural appropriation, I think it happens everywhere and in any form. And for myself personally, why I started including local elements in my work is sort of to try to be the voice, in a sense, of what's going on in Penang or what's going on in Malaysia. Because if you don't, someone else is just going to be that voice. And it, it is mm. definitely going to be their perspective. They will know your perspective. We are the only one who knows what it's like to be in a culturally um, repressive country at most times and to be segregated based on our ethnicity even though most of us don't really care mm. and the government uses this as a form of control and censorship so there's a lot of that in being an Asian artist a lot of slightly different things to navigate around like mm. well in the West you also face different different um, issues but it's the, the I wouldn't I don't want to compare it that way because that's how it is. But yeah, I think I just lost my thread. I was just passing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's good. Now. It's good. I think your idea of identity, what you're talking about, um, do you have to live in Asia? I think we'll, we'll circle back. But um, mm -hmm. why don't we hear? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Talk. I'll talk. Yeah, Hannah. Yes, like yeah. I mean, what I was going to say, you know, fits perfectly with what you started off about the identity because. You know, like I question myself, am I making an Asian art? I mean, you know, there's so many um, different artists who share the same experience like me, who, you know, there are lots of artists from Asia, you know, go to the Western countries to study art. Why, why are we doing that? And then their artists come back to the country and then we're creating this new form of Asian art, which mm. is different with people who have just lived there. And we're like on the same line. Oh, I mean, this person who studied in Korea, for example, like a, a lot more authentic and more Asian and Oriental than me, who, you know, who lived all my life in Jakarta, which is like 
you know, which is like a completely different side of Asia where there's completely different culture and language and like go to like London to study. So it's like when I come back to Korea and, you know, do my artistic practice, I find, you know, lots of things that I question myself. You know, I was, they, they see me like, oh, you adopted very Western approach to creating this. So mm. I find it very interesting. But when I went to London, for example, lots of comments that I had was like, oh, your more makings are, reminds me of very oriental lines in this spiritual mm. ways. So, you know, this border where I find myself like not <laughs> anywhere. So I do question myself, maybe what I'm creating, lots of people are having this contemporary Asian art. You know, I, I lie in, contemporary art but like i do question myself like it, I, I can't call this like completely asian but mm. it's nothing that i don't think it's a problem in a sense it's it's mm. like a natural shift because so many people nowadays like you know move on to different countries globally and even you know like covid you know made us work a lot more in the you know in the media in the sns so like it's mm. we're connected integrated a lot more globally so the film is now like a lot blurred mm. that's my mic work now yeah. oh my god yeah. oh. Oh. i was just waiting for you all <laughs> oh my god that's so wonderful i was wondering um actually silan if you were going to join us and i was like wondering <coughs> If we would no, no, no. I just, I just, I just did a last ditch uh, restart the computer and then it worked. Yeah. Great. Oh my god! So okay, Why don't you just give us a quick intro into you, mm. your art mm. practice, and then mm. I want you to t- address identity as an Asian artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, in addition to what Ethan said, um, uh, I'm an artist from Singapore, and the primary uh, concept, or even the medium that I use in the in all my works, is time. And time uh, intersects with with memory, with society, with politics, with culture, uh, with history, and so on. And it's, and some of my work and research involves understanding the past and the present to to also understand the future. And the future is a very important uh, thing, uh, a concept to my practice, which later I will, I will highlight. Uh, as far as like, so a lot of the the reading. That I do has to do with uh, well, futurism has to do with science fiction, has to do with science itself, um, and also now AI and concepts like mind uploading and so on, and 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 that is not necessarily Asian, you see, mm. it's just technology, and this technology is also being harnessed by by people all over the world. These ideas and concepts, uh, as I as I mentioned in our in our call together before this. Uh, yeah. Before this live recording, uh, when we think about um, like the, the the only reason why we call ourselves uh, well Asian culture is because we're born here. You see, have have we been born in West Papua? We would be like West Papuans. Ah, you see, we, have we been born in uh, Canada? We'd be more Canadian, you know. Um, and 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 somehow uh, these labels are put onto us. But a lot of our understanding um, comes from the internet. I think the internet. Is is a is a, is a maker uh, and shaker of, of new culture. You see, um, shaper of new culture, and 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 for generations after us, you know, the the, the kids who, who grew up with you know broadband internet and grew up with with an iPad in their hands, um, for them, internet culture, uh, videos that go up, you know, memes, um, uh, whatever new social network are, uh, comes up, and and the kind of norms, the kinds of norms that are within that. Become part of their, become part of their culture. Even their, even their lingo. You know, uh, I see, I see kids in Asia uh, uh, use words uh, that that Americans are using. Like, hey, what up, fam? You know, it's like no fam. You know, it's like we don't say fam. You know, <laughs> but they pick this up from this American TikTok person or Twitter person, mm-hmm. and then it became part of their culture. And they talk to each other like that. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, and 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 this is only going to become more and more pronounced. Uh, and commonplace as we move forward in the future, as the internet becomes even more embedded in our lives. I mean, you know what the next step is. You know, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has announced um, the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, where we all go, when I wear goggles and attend, these calls are not going to happen like this. These calls are going to happen with our 3D avatars in a space, whether or not on Facebook platform, you see. So where does the idea of Asian uh, uh, fall there when we're all going to dress, we, we, our avatar might be like a purple monster with you know, 12 <laughs> tentacles. Yeah, so yeah. interesting well, things to think about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think what's interesting, uh, one of the things that I see in this panel today, which is quite interesting, I find, is that each of you, you're the new generation. You are the new Asia. Each of you have had exposure in the West. I mean, you know, uh, so interesting uh, hearing, you know, your different backgrounds. Um, I think that, um, for example, Adam, who works both in Indonesia and also in Los Angeles, and uh, Adam, I, I, I don't know your background as well, but I know that, for example, um, when Aaron, you studied in, uh, is it Canada? Yeah? yeah. And so mm -hmm. you and your background, and then um, uh, Hannah, you're saying that you grew up in Jakarta, but then you studied in London, you come back to Korea. You know, what's your identity? I think all of you, the fundamental thing that is common to all artists is you need to know your identity. So maybe we want to, you know, and it's okay to be Asian. It's okay to be Canadian. It's okay to be Dutch. It's okay to be Japanese or Korean. Yeah. Or, but you, you are a unique artist. You have a voice. You have your own identity. It is your work to mature, know who you are. What is your message? And I think that, you know, um, uh, Silan, when you're talking about futurism and the past, present, and uh, that will help us understand the future. Right now, each of you, you're challenged. Who are you? What is your art practice? What identifies you? What makes you unique? This is the real challenge. And I think that each artist, um, you need to hone in on what's your message? What's your medium? And, and sometimes many artists have many mediums. You can't, I mean, uh, you know, Ai Weiwei, you know, is he just a conceptualist? No. He has, his art practice spans many things. So I think, and also, you know, you've mentioned a little bit, um, each of you, you've seen different societies. You yeah. understand you're from different backgrounds. Um, each of you are confronted, you know, some, you know, uh, even we in America, we were confronted with some, you know, censorship or, you know, we're dealing politically, you know, engagement. Um, I think during the Trump era, uh, it was terrible for us. And I think that, you know, maybe in Indonesia or in Malaysia, you know, you have to, artists need to be able to be a little more malleable, right? Um, so yeah. how do you do this? How can you be effective? You don't want to be locked up, but you want to be able to speak your mind. So let's talk about identity, maybe. Mm. So tell me about how are you, how are you contributing? Mm. What's your vision? What's your future? Um, um, I, I think Aaron, for example, you know, you, you've come back to your society. You know more about the Renaissance, right? So, and now you, you, you want, are you, you, you know, do you have to, you're living in, you know, Malaysia uh, to be an effective artist, do you, do, you, do you have to know about Malaysian art? Do you have to be a Malaysian art? I mean, you're an artist, right? Does it, so it really, doesn't matter. What really matters is, are you making interesting art? Are you being truthful to yourself? So I think this is the challenge. And maybe, um, maybe each of you want, you want to talk a little bit about your challenges. And what do you think is your gold nugget in each of your own art practice? So Aaron, uh, is it the Renaissance? Is it Malaysia? What, what's your, what's, what do you have on the menu for us? Consumers, tell us. Well, I would say I never shook up the Renaissance part <laughs> in terms of my drawings because it's just so much a part of who I am already. I was attracted to that. I was attracted to Nordic myths when I was a kid, Scottish myths when I was a kid because it was interesting. And I did read Chinese myths, but I find that there's some subtle cruelty there that I just couldn't get into it. And so personally, it was very much my own choice to go into Western form of thinking, to go into Western form of art, and to learn Western art. But then when I came back, I just felt that there is also a deeper part of me that wanted to be more connected to my historical roots here in Malaysia. Well, being Chinese, I'm not originally Malaysian, because Malaysia, Malays are... The, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Adam Umar <laughs> probably know more about that, too. Uh, yeah, Maybe I Zealand just... to some extent. Yeah, so there is definitely a whole... Because the Chinese 
migrated to Malaysia three generations or four generations past during the war. So much like what Sealand say that though he's of you know Sri Lankan descent, Tamil descent, we don't have a homeland in China or Sri Lanka or anywhere else, anyways. But I did learn about Malaysian history, and what connected me to Penang was just that it's a hub. It's a hub where many different cultures, and it still is a hub because we get we are a tourist destination. So we get people from many different cultures and, that meet and exchange ideas, and I think it's great because this is what I really enjoy. And I just feel that getting in touch with Penang, with my own Malaysian roots, it was a bit exploitative in how I went about it. I realized because I was like, "What is Malaysian art?" So I looked at traditional art first, much、mm-hmm. like I looked at Renaissance art, the tradition. Of things, and I realized、hmm, maybe I don't have to do it that way. So in、mm. terms of I'm doing paper cutting, which has a Chinese history, but yet I took it from a Polish paper cutting perspective to start with. Somehow I just it just was easier for me to understand, and、um, I turned it into something sort of new, my own language in a sense, my own visual language to try to communicate what I'm trying to say. And most of the time I'm not really clear on what I'm trying to say. <laughs> But it's just usually I want to evoke some kind of emotion in people, and I want to make something that has not been seen before as impossible as it is, but something new from what all my experiences and all my and what I've learned in the past. So、um, yeah, I think that's pretty much. And in terms of infusing it with local elements, that's how I keep it grounded in that. It's produced in Southeast Asia specifically, by someone living in Penang, by a woman living in Penang, and what I have to navigate going around, you know, <laughs> this strange landscape here. So yeah, that's my take on it. Beautiful.、Um, uh, Susan, you want to tell a little about your what your you know your comments, your thoughts, <laughs> or actually, no, excuse me, Hannah, you want to speak in there? Anna? Yeah,、oh, I was、okay. confused for a minute. Who was who, Susan? <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes I was confused as well. Sorry, sorry. I was confused. Yeah, well, sorry, yeah.、Um, I think right now, like, what is more concerned with me is,、um, you know, not of these orientality of the mark makings,、mm. but you know, as a painter, because you know, I have been very solidly going through one way and developing. To create a sense of space within just the canvas, right? So this is nothing to do with the culture, but、um, as a painter, I'm I I want to you know challenge myself all the time to get out of the painting. At the same time, nowadays painters you know do、uh, it, when you know when you go to like a painting major, n- not everyone does paintings, you know. Under the name of painting, we have performance. We've got you know sculptures. There's so many different installations, and I got I get very challenged by that because I've been solidly just like concentrating on you know developing my、um, being sense of space and mark making just within me. So that is actually my next challenge. To and I have been studying about how I can step out of that. And you know, been talking, and I've been experimenting too. So, I think that's me as my next challenge to、um, develop myself as an artist. Not I. I wouldn't call like I'm a painter, but I want to call myself as an artist at the same time.、Yeah. You you wouldn't say that again. You wouldn't call yourself a painter. Only. Like, Only right. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Adam, Adam, you want to、uh, uh, tune in here? Tell us about your art practice, identity. You, you, you have to be specific. Yeah. Which one? Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you have to add it here. Okay. Well, here. So I'll say Adam、uh, had Adam the bar. Okay.、Um, sure. So I, I think、um, probably the prime, primarily the reason why I was invited on this particular panel is because、um, my mixed race. Indonesian ancestry and that identity, the way that I have chosen to look at that, the stories, the stories that were absent in my particular family, just through, just through, you know, generations trying to forget certain things,、um, 
it was a kind of an open slate. So I just knew, you know, with my last name and my complexion, you know, the different phenotypes that my family shows, we are mixed Asians, but there was no spe- specificity to that. So it just meant that I could go and kind of make it up. The first projects that I made as an Asian artist were kind of like me making, oh, there's some recent work right there. Um, I was kind of playing around with it. I, I, I was in Bali or I was in Java putting on costumes, making self-portraits in the costumes and saying, okay, if I was actually an Indonesian artist, how, how would I make a self-portrait? And I have a twin brother, so I started making, he was my model. So then there was a little more distance. And so after 10 or 12 years, there's like a lot of distance now. And I'm, I sit very comfortably as an American, Dutch, Indonesian artist. So like all of those places, after having spent a lot of time there, after having learning, learned Bahasa Indonesia, after having learned batik practices and wood carving and leather carving, only then... Um, Am I comfortable talking about it um, this freely? Uh, but I will say that when I show in Indonesia, the work is seen very differently from that audience because they have a completely different context. So when you, when you were saying that maybe you went too traditional and that kind of interrogation may have been unnecessary, I, I think it is necessary, actually, because that is, we'll, we'll just say that's kind of the ground the working, everybody kind of gets it from there. So if you're going to be a, kind of diverting from that, you need to be able to have that particular reference. Mm. So I felt similarly. So with Batik, I'm not going to make sarongs, but I know I can make a wax-resist watercolor painting. Or I'm not going to carve wayang, but I can carve something else. Um, and I think those decisions to do something else is where the hybridity comes in mm. and where the novelty can come in. And novelty is where when you ask Ethan, where is the golden nugget? The golden nugget is where the novelty comes in. That's what the, the art market wants, unfortunately. Mm. You're expected to have it, and if you don't have it, you don't play. Well, thank you. Um, uh, Silan, you want to um, talk about your art practice? Um, yeah, I think uh, I've, I've just kind of written down, uh, broke into a few things so that it's easier to understand. Um, as far as art, um, history goals or movements or ideas, methods. I think uh, I have identified most with uh, situationism, situationism by Guy Debord. And uh, um, as as far as like philosophy goes, uh, I mean I've, I've ex- ex- experimented with existentialism and all, but I think uh, Taoism by Lao Tzu is 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 the philosophy that I identify with most. Um, and in some of my works, also. Uh, I'm just naming the components, and we can see the overlap later. And the, in terms of language, um, I do use multiple languages in my work, uh, Eastern and Western languages. Uh, but I, but I, but I do have a tendency, or I have this uh, unique language that I bring out, which is Tamil. I'm one of the few artists, probably the only contemporary artist in the world that uses Tamil text uh, script in their work. And this is because it is a very much a minority language, and uh, but it's a very unique language. So I try to um, I try to preserve it uh, some way in my visual art, you know, because as a language, it may be just seen on signboards or not seen at all. But through visual art, uh, I can I can sort of uh, yeah encapsulate or preserve it in the, in, the, in the contemporary art world. Uh, so you use Tam- Tamil, you said. Tamil text, yeah. Scripture. But this this looks like also Chinese. Uh, that's Chinese, yeah. So I use uh, multiple languages, and and this is a this is reflective of what I said earlier, right? Where today we absorb, if we're open, we absorb all cultures of the world, all ideas, and we take and we use. Especially as artists, we we selectively uh, use, you know, selective application of aesthetics and ideas in order to create new works of. Uh, new works for this globalized world. Uh, yeah, and then, and then, as I mentioned earlier, my reading involves futurism, science fiction, uh, a lot of readings on ideology, not necessarily, um, uh, you know, adhering to a particular ideology, uh, but but understanding ideology and how and how humans are, are, are susceptible to it, or how how they choose to become to believe what they believe. And Singapore becomes, and therefore Singapore becomes a perfect place for me to do this, to understand this, 
because it is often used as a, as an example of how you can have a one party state for 60 years but not have uh, not have democracy but have structural and uh, economic development and it's used as a as as an example by many other authoritarian states that try that want to emulate this system uh, okay we can have economic proze- progress but we do not need political and social freedom yeah so it, it's very interesting very, i'm very lucky to be uh, born here in order to understand this uh, nonsensical ideology um and 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 overall the medium as i as i as i understood it uh, myself my prime medium is time time is the medium and and whatever other applications are used whether it's paint or installation or video or performance all that is 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 the periphery yeah how do i understand time and then use time to create works of art uh, and, and 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 that's me <laughs> you know whether that's uh, asian or western or what i don't know but uh, it's, yeah. it's just it's a process of understanding oneself as you have said beautiful um adam adam umar when you give us a i just you're you we missed uh, getting to know your work a little bit more intimate last 10 days ago when we all talked for an hour but share a little bit about what you do why you do it your background you know where are these colors what, what's your inspiration you know where's your studio right so a bit of my background i am actually a self taught uh, artist um I didn't graduate high school. So actually I dropped out when I was uh, 15 uh, because I was severely mentally ill as most artists are. <laughs> uh I started working when I was 18. Uh so I, so I've had lots of working experience uh working with uh, Hishan and Mikey. I was a club promoter at one point for some reason and uh I've been active in the arts industry for somewhat very recently in 2020 actually so i think i'm quite the baby in this panel <laughs> as and um i would say one of the artists that has made a huge impact on me is uh, yayuri kusama and i think that definitely shows in my art um and i definitely relate to her uh, the way that she copes with her mental health struggles and her and she uses art as a way to keep herself sane and i think that's something that i relate to on a deeply personal level um So a bit on what we're talking about, and I don't want to talk long because I think we're we finished our time actually. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it short, but I think that's the biggest conundrum of our time, you know, of our postmodern situation. Who am I? You know, who are we? You know, what is my identity? What do I believe in? And you were mentioning the golden nugget, right? And you know. If you were to refer to my identification card on my Malaysian uh, ID, I'm Malay, but I am of uh, Indian and Indonesian and Javanese heritage. So where does that Malay identity come from? So, and at the same time, you know, I'm an artist. You know, I'm a male artist. I'm also a queer artist. I'm also an artist that is uh, HIV positive. So all of these intersect, and. And I think this is something that all of us, you know, ask ourselves again and again: Who are we? You know, what do we believe in, and what do we represent? And and I think my golden nugget is that it's for me in a way to to have a synthesis, you know, in a way because I do consider myself a Marxist. <laughs> so you know, you have the you have the thesis and the antithesis. You know, you have the West and you have the East. And for me, my golden nugget, my bridge, is to understand. to be a bridge between the west and the east and in a sense to be a bridge between you know contemporary art and you know classical art you know so in a way to be informed of what is happening now in Malaysia currently at the same time aware of its uh, tradition and history and the same thing goes for the west and the east so i think my golden nugget is to understand you know to be the the middle ground and just to be the synthesis Right. Well, it's interesting. I, I, I applaud you. I think that the issues that you brought up are powerful. Um, the idea of being HIV positive, um, mm. being uh, someone who dropped out of high school. Um, I mean, there's no one way to become. There's no one road to Rome. There are many mm. roads, and I think that you have to find your calling, your path. The idea of mental health. I mean, Ayoyi Kusama, all her life, she's dealt with mental health issues. and um you know living partly in a uh sanitarium um 
but very, very determined to become famous. She was, you know, she wanted to be more famous. She told everyone she wanted to be more famous than Andy Warhol. And really, you know, it's interesting. Yes. She's, you know, it's, he's a tough competition, but she's done well, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, uh, I've had a, the pleasure to meet her on a few occasions. Uh, I've sold her work. I've, uh, she's come to authenticate in my gallery. Yeah, she's great. Amazing, amazing, crazy. So my closest friends were very close to her in their early 60s. Uh, my Japanese artist, uh, uh, Shinohara, uh, uh, photographed her, some of her performances in 1970 in New York, nude performances and putting polka dots in everybody. Um, well, interesting. Adam, I noticed in your career, you're, you're, you're quite, um, you're showing a lot of good galleries. I see some of my very good colleagues with Kristen's per gallery you've shown, the, also at the whole. So you're actually um, quite international. Um, and uh, maybe a little bit um, uh, out there in the market. Um, for in your life, uh, is this good to be identified as an Asian artist? Do you mind being identified as an Asian artist? Or do you really want to be labeled artist or Adam DeBoer? No, I think that the, you know, the, my particular story is, is, is quite... Um, it's just specific. And I, as I said previously, people, as, as soon as I started being really specific, the work seemed to get better because I think it became more interesting to me, more authentic to me. And viewers can just see that. But also, as I was saying before, not to be cynical about it, there's not a lot of Indonesian influence in contemporary art, like in New York City or in London. And so when you show up and you can do that and you speak, the language is fluently English, as well as I do. You can just kind of talk your way into those situations. And then, you know, success begets other success, really. So, you know, if you do well with one gallery, then the next one comes calling. But, it, I mean, it was just sheer luck. And and I went to Indonesia as a surfer, actually. I mean, it was completely accidental. And a kind of personal anecdote, I was trying my best to get into Yale which is a great painting school in the United States. I could not even get an interview there. And it wasn't until I started just applying to schools abroad as like a Dutch Indonesian surfer dude got into all the schools, same exact artwork. So that's why I ended up going to school in London because that's where the, the scholarship was. But it was that, that was a very early lesson for me that like you need to lean into this novelty or find in, like, if you find your path that way, either, you know, the other roads will, will open up. Well, yeah, I think, yeah, but it's interesting. I, I think that um, novelty, I, I think it really is more fundamental. I think it's more about you have to find your identity. Exactly. Your identity. I, I, I think when I use the word novelty, I, I, yeah. that is specific. That is cynical of it. Um, I don't mean it that way. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, you have to figure out what, you're, what you want to say and how you, how you can say it better than anyone else. <clears throat> Yeah, and that makes you unique. Exactly. Yeah, more desirable. Um, but I mean, it's it, like, listen, the, the, the profession you have chosen is not an easy one. I mean, there's no, you know, you know, to, you know genius takes nine tenths hard work. I think that, you know, being an artist, it is not an easy profession. It's something that you need to be dedicated to every day. Um, you need to be completely honest. You need to be vulnerable. I think that you're you know, showing up today. Uh, I applaud each of you and thank you for showing up because you're sharing with us, uh, the audience um, uh, and future audience, because this is being recorded, um, about your art practice and your questioning and trying to figure out what is your future. You know, how, how are you going to interpret? You're in this struggle trying to figure out what is it you want to make and how are you going to share it with us? And I think that is beautiful. That's the challenge. That's the excitement. Uh, and I think for me, as the moderator here, for me, getting to know each of you, I'm very interested in seeing each of you and your career, how you, what are your next steps? Where are you going to be in six months or a year? You know, um, Hannah, you're, 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 you know, I love, I, I, my whole life has been dedicated to experimental line um, and gesture and, you know, abstract expressionism and, you know, 
Orientalism, uh, you know, or looking back into the Song Dynasty painting, you know, uh, you know, I mean, seriously, I mean, uh, today we're showing right now Ed Schlossberg, who is one of the top American conceptualists. In his painting, there is Chinese technique of brush painting that looks a little bit like um, early Chinese, you know, the Song Dynasty painting or Ming Dynasty. Um, and he needs, he himself is interested in Asian art. And I think that, you know, Sai Twombly, um, uh, Robert Motherwell, um, I have a Chinese artist, uh, Zhang Hong Tu, who actually has a fake cover of a Christie's Asian art catalog that and had stamps on it. And it looks very Asian. It's an ink drawing. It looks like it's made in, you know, three, four hundred years ago. But in fact, he simply appropriated a Jackson Pollock ink drawing from 1948 or something and changed it, the position and put Chinese seals on it. And it's, it's indistinguishable. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's a point. What is Asian art? Does it matter? Right. Um, and, um, it sent, you know, I, this may be a, a hot topic for all of us, but you know, censorship, freedom of expression, how are you going, what's the next step? As an Asian artist, it, you know, COVID, post COVID, you know, it, has COVID helped you? Has COVID hindered you? How are you guys surviving? Maybe that's the next thing. Tell me how you're, how you're doing. Um, Aaron. Okay. I can go first because I made the drastic decision to sort of get myself high full time in a completely unrelated job to art. <laughs> But are you are, so? Are you going to come back? Try to be back full time making your art yes. practice. Yes. So I gave myself five years. I always do. When, when I came back to Malaysia, I gave myself five years in art and realized that um, I needed more financial skills. And then when COVID happened, I was like, okay, I I I was at the point where I had to reevaluate my choices, anyways. So I made the choice to get hired full time as a research analyst, which I really enjoy. But that meant that I have only one day a week for art, which I still do. And I still join group shows, but it's just that my work can't be as elaborate or detailed uh, as big as I want it for now. But it will give me the sort of like another startup capital, like in five years to get back into it again. So that is my plan. And COVID sort of did help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's one of my collage works. Um, I did that when I did my residency in London. There was just before, there was 2000, 2019, yeah, before everything changed for good. So, so the pandemic did influence my work a lot. It has become, uh, I, well, I love it actually being so to stay home. I'm highly introverted and I finally found a way of life that works for me where I can keep a full-time job working from home and to make my art and to be, you know, relatively happy. So actually, um, I see the silver lining in it, even though a lot of my friends were negatively affected, businesses were negatively affected and we lost um, quite a few young artists and also mature artists to COVID. And so there is a lot to work through and I feel that having art helps a lot and I definitely will keep making work and I still am making work. So I've got shows coming up next and I'm trying to figure out how to make the time to make everything happen and yeah, I'll definitely come back to it at full time again. Great, thank you. Um, who wants to go next? I'll go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like after the COVID, actually, um, you know, I sort of stumbled doing like physical shows in, you know, Seoul, where I'm staying right now. But eventually, somehow, I feel like I could be anywhere in the world because everything that I do right now, I am actually I'm doing my other job as well. I'm teaching people, but those kids are all in Jakarta, so. I, that's nothing to do with me physically in Korea. And right now, currently, at this moment, you know, my work is hold um, offline in Jakarta as well, in, in an art fair. And I'm like staying here in so And, you know, there's like, and also like, I talk with people from the US or London. So it's, it's very bizarre that 
um, I have slowed, so because of COVID, since I stopped um, showing artworks on physical galleries in, in 